He's blunt, but he's fair. This is Drew Berquist, former counterterrorism officer, realist, and host of This Is My Show, which starts now. All right, that's right. I'm Drew Berquist. This is my show. And Lambda, Lambda, Lambda. Also, don't forget about Epsilon. These are the new variants that we talked about. And I'm beginning to think maybe the whole purpose behind this was much more than control. It was also to teach us Greek. Because we keep hearing about all of these new variants. And Fauci and crew are starting to warn against the Lambda variant. And I can't wait to hear their messaging on this. It's going to be so fascinating. Because according to early studies, and perhaps you've already heard this or read this, The Epsilon and Lambda variants of COVID-19 are both what the CDC considers to be variants of interest. And apparently, also according to these same early studies, they've developed a resistance to vaccines. Japanese researchers found that the Lambda variant, which was initially discovered in Peru and is spreading throughout South America, is highly transmissible and more resistant to vaccines than the initial COVID-19 strain. Now, in fairness, this is all new. I'm sure they know a lot more than they're telling us. But this is all new. It hasn't been peer-reviewed. And it doesn't mean that this is unequivocally the truth at this point. But there's people suggesting it. There's people thinking that that's the case. And it's going to be fun to watch. Fun to watch. And you say, oh, how could you say it's going to be fun, Drew? Are you heartless? People are dying. Well, yes, I am. But it's because your odds, regardless of whether you get the, the initial strain, the Delta variant, the Lambda variant, the Epsilon variant, any of these, whatever Greek letter they put in front of it, your odds are still really, really good to survive this virus. Even, even if you, if you don't have the vaccine. Damn near 100%. Damn near 100%. A little bit, little bit lower for some age categories and some people who have underlying conditions, which again, we've always said and continue to say, you guys should be careful. You should be smart about everything you do, not just COVID. Everything. You've, you've got you've to look out, which is what always, again, is lost in the conversation. Well, there's older people who are vulnerable. There's people with this condition or that condition who are vulnerable. Yeah, they're vulnerable to everything else this world's throwing at them too. We just don't talk about it every day. Anyways. So question, as, as we talk about this, question the people who are telling you how to think and what to think. And look at the figures in science for yourself. We talked about this yesterday. You do the research. You look at stuff. Make your own determinations. And tell anyone that suggests that you do what they say to screw off. I mean, honestly, think about this. We've got, we've got 99% here in what I'm going to use is in a good way because those are your odds. Those are the survivability rates. But also 99% of the people that you know. And many of us have fallen in this category for a long period of life. Maybe you're not there anymore. That's great. But 99% of the people you know get their information from bad sources. They, they, they just listen to what others tell them to do, how, how they tell them to feel. Did you, see, did you see what that person said? Aren't you so mad? You're mad, right? You're gonna Get mad. Get mad so we can be mad together. People have been doing that forever. Don't be like them. Break away from that mold. Break away from that mold. Think for yourself. And if someone's pushing back on something, you push back. Look at how people are pushing back in France right now. Look at this clip right here. This is Melbourne, Australia, who's got these draconian, tyrannical lockdowns in place right now. Why, I don't know. Well, we do. But but here's the people pushing back. Take a look. Amazing, Melbourne. I love it. And look, I've told you before, I hate protests. I think they, 
in most cases, produce nothing. Results don't change. People just feel good about themselves and or they get an opportunity to, to break out the, the markers and the colored pencils and some poster board, which they haven't done since elementary and middle school. But they rarely accomplish stuff. But in this day and age, and particularly here in our state, our country, where the government and the Democrat Party cares about control mostly, yes, but they also care about polling. I think it'd be interesting to see if more people did it. Again, France is doing it too. Good on the people. Good on the people there for just saying, nope, not doing it. The United Kingdom has done it as well. Lots of people. All right, real quick, hit that like button, guys. Whatever platform you're on, goes a long way to push back against the crazy algorithms, the hateful person with green or pink hair on the other side that's watching this and trying to do everything they can to suppress the show, suppress my voice, suppress your right to hear my voice. So hit that like button, share, share, share with people. Make sure you're still subscribed. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. You can do so in the lower right corner on YouTube, upper right on Rumble, and just like the page on Facebook. Today's episode is brought to you by Red Beach Nation. Red Beach Nation provides conservative beachwear for freedom-loving Americans, whether you live at the beach or traveling to one or just want to imagine yourself there. Red Beach's comfy patriotic apparel is sure to lift your spirits. I promise that it will. There's tons of great stuff. There's some big news coming there as well. Check them out at redbeachnation.com. Use promo code DREW to save 10%. All right. So we got to hit this real quick. Biden is, is said to be considering COVID passports for foreigners entering the country. Probably saw that headline yesterday. Maybe you didn't, but he is. They are. And as a reminder, the U.S. border remains closed for traditional means of travel to, I think, 26 European countries, United Kingdom, Iran, India, South Africa, Brazil, and all because of, of COVID. So he's saying that we want to open things up, Joe Biden is. But you must prove that you're vaccinated if you're going to come into our country. So he's doing that. <laughs> Literally saying, you, 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 you can't come now. You can't come now unless you prove this. At least not through the airport or boat. But he's doing this as the southwest border is wide-ass open. So you can't come that way. It's open over here. Like... And there's no plans, by the way, to close the border and protect Americans. So if, if, as he weighs this, and we've been, again, in this situation, and now he's weighing the, well, if you can prove that you're vaccinated, you can come in. As as that's being discussed on the table, if you're from China or India or Iran or wherever, and you are currently prevented from coming here, fear not, my friends. Fear not. Fly your ass to Mexico and then walk in worry-free. Now, it's, tr- it's, it's hot. The desert can be treacherous. Cartels and, and coyotes down there are, are vicious. Odds are you'll be thirsty, hungry, probably raped. But if you make it, then you're here, you're free. You don't have to show it. Like, you're You're good. It's all just absurd. We're blaming the unvaccinated Americans, which again, data is not showing is the case for being the ones who are spreading this Delta variant. Not a test for the Delta variant, by the way, so you can't even really distinguish. But but they're, they're, they're blaming that while keeping the border open. They're saying you can't come in. We have rules. Maybe we'll let you if you do this. Well, meanwhile, again, you can just go around and come in this way. Hey, listen, the front door is locked. You got to have the passcode, but the back door is open. What this guy is doing to our country is criminal. And this is not, again, this is not a comparison to other presidents, to President Trump, the presidents before both of them. It's just an evaluation. It's just a clear as day evaluation that everyone should be making against someone who is radically changing our country, has succeeded in radically changing several elements is working really damn hard, or his people around him are, I should say, to change the rest of it. And some of you out there, too, are saying, oh, but change is good. Let's just just go with it. Don't be a curmudgeon. 
Don't be stuck in the past. Just let it happen. But I promise you, folks, this change, I, I keep saying it, it's us versus them. It's not Republican versus Democrat. It is. It feels that way. But it's not really that. And it's not lower versus upper or middle class. It's us versus them. Versus the powerful. Versus the people who want to bring about these changes, force these changes on this country and on you. And I promise this change will feel like, even for you, someone violently shoving a pineapple up your ass by the time they're done. It's not just conservatives, folks. Everyone. That includes you. You're going along with it because it feels good. You're part of group think, pack think. Oh, let's attack conservatives right now. They're all, they're all fascists. They're all this, that, and the other. No, no, no. Look at what's going on. Look at the definition of, of in a nonpartisan def- dictionary, which is ridiculous that we even have such a thing now. And look at the term fascism, authoritarian, author- all that stuff. You're going to see the other side. You're going to see the side that you're cheering for. And then you feel awful about yourself. And then, you're going to, oh, and then they're going to see something and they're going to do something. And you're going to be in that situation we just talked about. It's not going to feel good. Pineapples aren't supposed to go up there. They're supposed to be eaten. Speaking of ramming things through, with Congress out of session and the Democrats crying about this whole eviction moratorium thing, because it lapsed, right? AOC, everyone's, everyone's going nuts about it. Congress, the House of Representatives now on, on break, recess for seven, seven weeks, I believe it is. So everyone cried, and they cried loud enough that Joe Biden and the CDC, you heard, heard that right, the CDC, should have nothing to do with this, stepped in and did something that even he admitted, Joe Biden, wasn't completely sure was legal. <laughs> and what is this CDC doing? Making laws? Or what they deem to be laws, you ask? That's a hell of a question. Tucker Carlson had something to say about it. Here's his take, roll one. Rochelle Walensky now makes our laws. Walensky announced today that she has decided to nationalize America's rental properties, millions and millions of them from Maine to California. Tenants are no longer required to pay their rent. Property owners cannot evict them under any circumstances. Making someone pay to live on your property is now a federal crime. Try it and you can wind up in prison with hundreds of thousands of dollars in fines. At the same time, you should know, Property owners will still be required to pay the banks that hold their mortgages. There is no moratorium on mortgages. Why? The banks are huge Democratic donors, and they're getting the treatment that they paid for. Sandy Cortez and the squad are not calling for the banks to do their part, so they're not. It's property owners who will suffer, many of the members of the rapidly disappearing American middle class. It's hard to overstate what a momentous change this is. It means, among other things, that private property no longer exists in the United States. You thought you owned your home. Not anymore. Rochelle Walensky does. She'll decide who can live there, under what circumstances, and for how long. Is this a good idea? Of course not. It's totalitarian. But there's an even more pressing question at the center of this, a principle. A principle that defines what kind of country this is and what kind of country it will be going forward. And the question is this. Where did Rochelle Walensky get the power to do this, to suspend private property rights in America? And the answer is, she simply asserted the power. Walensky claimed she had the authority, and no one stopped her from exercising it. This morning, she signed an official-looking order declaring that her opinion is now the law, and so it is the law. But wait, you say, that doesn't seem very American. Shouldn't somebody vote on this? If we're going to continue to pretend this is a democracy, and you hear that on television constantly, then shouldn't our elected lawmakers make the laws? No, and they're not going to. Nancy Pelosi has refused to call a vote on the matter, and she runs the Congress. She decides. Meanwhile, most Republicans haven't said a word about it. And that means that an unelected college professor you'd never heard of six months ago is now in charge of your country. So Tucker's right, as usual. He's a smart, smart fella. There's a reason the other people, the other side attack him so much is because he's smart. He's right. He crushes them and they hate it. So all they can do is throw middle school attacks at him. But this new rule that he's talking about, he kind of alluded to it. And, and, and the, the rule that Joe and the CDC pushed through carries 
really, really steep criminal penalties. Landlords who, who, who don't follow suit with this, who don't go along with it, could have to pay up to a $100,000 fine. If the eviction, if, just for evicting them, if they evict them and that leads to, I don't know how you determine this, leads to their death, then they could pay up to $250,000 and a year in jail. Or at least seems fair. Now, do keep in mind that despite the rhetoric that's out there, despite the narrative that, that, that's out there, it's not really law. It's not actual law. They just want you to believe it is and feel like it is, much like all of their mass mandates, much like so much of this other stuff. You're not really required to do it. There are people who will try and enforce it. There are people who will try and arrest you. There are people who will try and fine you for not going along with them. But the law is the law. This is from National Review because I thought it was a good take on this very point. I'm going to read it. The Constitution tells us the federal government makes the supreme law of the land, and the judges in every state shall be bound thereby. Typically, this means that the courts of all sorts are obliged to follow the rules that have been set or delegated by Congress. In this case, though, those courts are not obliged to follow anything because they're bound only by the supreme laws of the land and because the CDC moratorium, which has no constitutional or statutory basis and which has been rejected by the highest court in the country isn't a law. Among those who can safely ignore the moratorium are everyone, landlords, collection agencies, the police, state legislatures, governors, the media, literally everyone. There are, of course, an enormous number of laws that Americans do have to follow, but this isn't among them because unlike those laws, this isn't a law. It doesn't count. It isn't authentic. It has no force. It's a dead letter. At best, it's a wish. At worst, it's theater. But what it most certainly not is, yes, that's right, a law. Love it. And the, look, the right. <laughs> the right. Still, so the other side is, like I said, they're going to push back. It's, oh, no, no, but it is. You've got to take this serious. Well, taking it serious and being an actual law are different things. What you're really saying is you have to agree with this, or we're going to try to punish you. And they'll try to exert their power, which they always do. That's their thing. But they're exerting power in this case that they only wish that they had. <laughs> the CDC. By the way, Jen Psaki thinks that Americans aren't worried about Biden breaking the law. This was brought up at the press briefing yesterday. Here was her response. Roll two. One more question on the eviction moratorium. I'll approach it this way. Uh, the president may support the legal justification, but he also publicly gave voice to doubts about the constitutionality. What's the White House's message then to Americans who heard what happened yesterday, heard what that was said at this podium on Monday, mm -hmm. can't square the two and are now disappointed that the president is signaling that he it doesn't respect the rule of law. I'm not sure there are Americans evaluating it to that degree. Maybe there are some you have talked to. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, they are, honey. You, you just don't want them paying attention. It's a different, different thing. But a lot of people, including people on your side, the Democrat side, do not like Joe. They don't respect Joe. He's a joke. And so are you for defending him. Defending him. I mean, this... I'm not going to go down the election stuff here. We, I, I have my thoughts on it. Everyone has their thoughts on it. Whatever. The proof is in the pudding. There's no excitement, no interest in Joe Biden. The legitimate votes that did happen on the Democrat side were because they hated Trump. They weren't actually to support Joe Biden. No one likes this guy. But with all of this all, this, all this power grab that's going on, all this committed, determined effort to control the populace, make you and everyone around you rely on big government, it's, it's, it's concerning. And, and, and you need to watch the CDC, who has, on numerous occasions now, tried to do way more than they are chartered to do. Massive overreach. And then you need to also watch the Capitol Police, which we've talked about some. But, I mean, they're, they're getting new technology, new tools. They're using stuff that the Capitol Police, which I'm not bashing on. There's some great people who work the Capitol Police. I'm sure they don't want to work there anymore because of all the politicization that's going on there, as is the case with so many agencies and organizations throughout the country. But every organization has a charter that they follow. Our mission is to do these things. Our left and right limit is this. The Capitol, Capitol Police has always had a very truncated, smaller 
charter as compared to FBI, any other DOJ law enforcement organization for that matter. But that's not the case anymore. They're using all this new technology, all these new tools, establishing field offices in other states, Florida being one of them, and basically being used as a weapon by the House Speaker and the Democrats to track and target what they deem to be political opponents. There's a lot of this kind of stuff going on here that shouldn't be going on. It's not what's supposed to be going on. It's not whatever, what was ever intended for these organizations. And as a whole, from Biden on down, the government's becoming something that it was never supposed to become. And again, I'll say, if you think it doesn't bite you in the end, if you're like, oh, but I'm on that side, because you're buying into all the crap that CNN and MSNBC and Joe Biden and Jen Psaki are saying about conservatives. That, don't be fooled. Don't buy into that. You don't have to like everything we like. Just understand that this will bite you in the end. All right, we got a lot more to get to. We'll do it on the other side of the break. Stick around. Hey, guys, if you haven't already, you need to head on over to mammothnation.com. They're America's conservative discount club, and they're on a mission to keep this country great. They support conservative causes and candidates, the Constitution, the Second Amendment, your right to worship, and so much more. And the best part? You get huge discounts on products and services that you're already buying. You'll likely pay for your membership with your first purchase. Guys, I'm a lifetime member. I wouldn't push this if it wasn't that important. So stand up for your country and the Constitution. Push back against woke America and shop conservative. Go to mammothnation.com and become a lifetime member today. Want to be sure you don't miss updates from Drew and the team? Sign up at Getter and follow Drew for his latest takes. That's G-E-T-T-R. Then search Drew Berquist and click follow. You're listening to This Is My Show with Drew Berquist. So I say this all the time. I'm going to say it again. Welcome back, by the way. Glad you're still here. But Governor Ron DeSantis is not just America's governor. He's America's politician. He is what all politicians should be. And, and bear in mind, I'm saying the word politician, understanding the, the very true fact that he is a politician. He's done that for a long time. He's served this country. He's done a, a lot of amazing things, but he is a politician. But he's a damn good politician. He's one who gets, he's, he's a politician doing what politicians are supposed to be doing. He's the future of the GOP, future of the party. And what everyone, literally on both sides, should should see is that he's 100% not about controlling citizens, regardless of whether you voted for him or not. He's 100% about freedom. Every policy he does, that is the result. And there are plenty. Florida at points gets really, really purple and it gets a little concerning. There are plenty of Democrats here. And while a lot of them are lashing out at him right now for giving them freedom, which makes no sense, the one thing that no one can argue is at the end of the day, his policies result in 100% freedom for his people. And the proof's in the pudding. And as we spoke about Joe in this last segment, pushing all this stuff, and we showed Jen Psaki in the White House attacking DeSantis earlier this week. Biden has attacked him. Saki's at all of them have. The media does every damn day, as much as they can. Here's what (laughs) friggin' the man Ron DeSantis said in response to it. Roll three. Joe Biden suggests that if you don't do lockdown policies, then you should, quote, get out of the way. But let me tell you this. If you're coming after the rights of parents in Florida, I'm standing in your way. I'm not going to let you get away with it. (laughs) 
if you're trying to deny kids a proper in-person education, I'm going to stand in your way, and I'm going to stand up for the kids in Florida. If you're trying to restrict people, impose mandates, if you're trying to ruin their jobs and their livelihoods and their small business, if you are trying to lock people down, I am standing in your way, and I'm standing for the people of Florida. So why don't you do your job? Why don't you get this border secure? And until you do that, I don't want to hear a blip about COVID from you. Thank you. That's, that's what you're supposed to do. That's what I, I said it, I think, maybe as, as recent as yesterday. If you guys, other governors, other politicians, people who are beneath him in the Florida State Legislature, people who are up-and-comers at the city, the local city level, other governors throughout the country, watch what he is doing. You, can't, you don't have to do every policy the exact same, but watch the intent behind it. Watch how he's willing to say, everyone is pushing really hard against me. And instead of caving or just quietly not doing what I was going to do and hope that it goes away, I'm going to stand up and say, no, screw you. I'm still doing it because I care about these people. And again, is there a, an aspect of it that's, that's due to political aspirations? He wants to, to carry on, win another term as governor, and then become president one day, which I think he probably will be at this rate. Yeah, of course there is. If you're in politics, that's the big game. You want to get there. But it also takes balls and courage to stick to your principles and be who you are, which he's doing. So again, the rest of you out there, copy and paste. Then staying in Florida, to wrap up this segment, CNN, who of course is, is ridiculous and, and lacks as much credibility as Dr. Fauci, stalked and harassed a doctor who was, who was openly questioned the efficacy of masks, and has had some, some current concerns that he's expressed with the, the vaccine. So he's done that, and this CNN chick shows up and stalks him. Because how dare you share something that goes against the narrative that we're trying to peddle at our network, that, this, that our, our, our daddy, Joe Biden, is telling us to peddle to our viewers. How dare you go against that? This is her stalking her, him, excuse me, all over. Roll four. Dr. Mercola to ask him about the misinformation he's been posting. Like masks may not work, vaccines could be dangerous, and vitamin C and D can prevent or treat the coronavirus. We first tried to find him at his office in Cape Coral, Florida, outside Fort Myers. I'm looking for Dr. Joseph Mercola. Not here. Not here. Is he, is he here today? Can I leave a message? He's not here. Will he be here Tomorrow, if not today, or no, he's not. No, he's not here. So even though his office is listed here, he's not. He doesn't work out of here. No. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Next stop, more than 220 miles away, Ormond Beach, Florida, which Dr. Mercola calls home. We found his house behind a large gate and tried making contact through the security access pad. Hello, this is Randy Kay from CNN. I'm hoping to get a word with Dr. Mercola. Later, we spotted Joseph Mercola riding his bicycle. Once he stopped, we thought this was our opening to get some answers as to why he's pushing false claims about masks and the vaccine. How are you? I'm Randy Kay with CNN. Can we ask you a couple questions? We just want to talk to you about vaccines and what you've been saying about them. Do you feel responsible for people who didn't get vaccinated, possibly got sick and died because of what you told them about the vaccine? What do you say to families who lost loved ones? Are you spreading misinformation? Why won't you speak to us? All right, first of all, at this, it's ridiculous, right? Absolutely ridiculous. But at this point, as much as we hate each other, and as much as battle lines are kind of being drawn, and Florida and Texas and South Dakota, Mississippi, Oklahoma, Iowa, some of these states that are saying, we're just not, we're just not going to listen to what you say, federal government, because you clearly don't have our best interests at heart, so we're going to do our own thing. So as these battle lines are being drawn, why is CNN even here? Get out. Go to your place. I'm, I'm, I'm all for freedom. I fought for people's freedom. But we're, we're in a different spot as a country now. We're not really a country. On paper, we are. But golly, I mean, these people hate America. They're peddling BS. So let's get ahead with this divorce. You have your side, you have your states, we have ours. You have your news, do whatever the hell you want there. If you want to call and ask questions, great. But go and conduct your 
operations in the socialist states of America, not the United States of America. And there is rapidly becoming a very distinct difference between the two. And you, maybe you won't go with that name. I think that's fitting for you guys, but whatever you want to call it. But again, in the case of, of her work here, you're angry that someone has a different view than you. A view that a lot of people have on your side too. They're not all the way anti-vax. They're not all the way anti-mass, but they, but they have questions about it. Some people are obviously way to that side, but you're mad because he's questioning mass and you're kind of lightly doxing him, by the way, along the way, showing pictures of his house, showing pictures of his office, where he goes to the beach. But you're mad because he's questioning vast and a vaccine, again, that has some issues. And that may not even work, as we talked about at the beginning, against some of these variants that are coming along, like Lambda and Epsilon. And by the way, your own network aired a Biden COVID advisor just this week, your network, that said masks are mostly ineffective. Here it is again, in case you forgot. We played it earlier this week, but here it is again, roll five. We know today that many of the face cloth coverings that people wear are not very effective in reducing any of the virus movement in or out. Either you're breathing out or you're breathing in. And in fact, if you're in the upper Midwest right now, anybody who's wearing their face cloth covering can tell you they can smell all the smoke that we're still getting. We need to talk about better masking. We need to talk about N95 respirators, which would do a lot for both people who are not yet uh, vaccinated or not previously infected, protecting them, as well as keeping others who might become infected, having been vaccinated, from, from breathing out the virus. And yet you had to hustle down, get to Florida, stalk the guy, and angrily ask why he has a different opinion than you. He has every right to that opinion, and he can scream it from a mountaintop. Things are irreconcilable, folks. They just are. The other side not only hates you and obviously this doctor for having a different opinion, but they honestly hate America. They hate what America stands for. And they want you, they, that you have to 100% comply with their narrative and with their agenda and where they want things to go. And this is not conspiracy. This is, they want this for America. We want this for America. There's no give and take. These things. Don't come like this. They literally are just going to keep going and spreading further out to the sides. And they want, as is the case with this attempted hit piece here, they want their viewers and everyone else, which are not many anymore, but they want everyone else to hate you too. It's not just them. They want everyone else on board. Not healthy, by the way. Miserable people. Miserable people. All right, we're going to wrap the show on the other side of this break with another miserable person who's a part of the squad. They're all something. I'll show you what I'm talking about. We'll finish it up and then get ready for booze and banter tomorrow. But stick around for this because you've got to see the hypocrisy of, of who... Uh, it just drives me crazy. I'll show you what I'm talking about. See you on the other side. We have a lot of serious problems in the world. Some are outside of our control and some are very much within. And one that you can control without a shadow of a doubt is what's happening south of your border. And I'm not talking about the southwest border. I'm talking about your junk. And UFM Underwear for Men has the solution. Most men's underwear these days don't provide actual support. They just smash your goods against your thigh, resulting in sweating, sticking, rubbing, all sorts of nasty stuff. Ladies, don't act like you haven't seen your man try to navigate his way out of such awkward situations. It's no good for anyone. But the good news is UFM's patented pouch system eliminates all skin-on-skin -skin contact in your nether regions, all because of their unique drawstring adjustable support pouch, which allows you to increase the support to your preference, and it provides actual support. What a novel concept. Just think of it like social distancing, but in your pants. UFM moves with your body so you can go from one activity to the next without a second thought. They're great for sports, work, everyday use, and even some medical applications as well. So support your manhood. Treat yourself right. You deserve it, men. Go to ufmunderwear.com. Use promo code DREW to get $6 off. With big tech's rampant hatred for conservative thought, 
and their devious suppression tactics, Drew and This Is My Show is staring down uncertainty like never before. You can support the show by continuing to listen, watch, engage, and share. And you can play an even bigger role by donating to the show. You can do so directly at drewberquist.com, then click support. Any amount is helpful in our fight with big tech, and individuals that hit certain thresholds will be given producer credits on This Is My Show episodes. Again, that's drewberquist.com, then click support, and get engaged with the fight. served this country fighting extremists overseas and now exposes radical democratic extremists right here at home. This is Drew Berquist and this is his show. All right, so I love picking on the squad. They're, look, they're an easy target. We all get that. Even their side picks on them. They demonstrate clearly. <laughs> With their passion projects, which again, I give them credit for. They are very passionate people. Very passionate people. But they're passionate about things that make zero sense. And when they attempt to defend these things or define these policies, it shows that they are radical and that they don't like America. Again, they want to change it. You can say you like something or someone. But if your next step then is, okay, but I want to change everything about it, then you don't really like it. You like the idea of something different, which you are entitled to. But I'm so sick of the other side saying that they love America and then saying, but if we could just change, like, everything, that would be awesome. And that's what they do. And they make up these policies. They throw out these ideas that always prove they're, they're imbeciles because they literally can't work, whether it's the math aspect of it or whether it's just a, a, a concept that would never fly, whatever the case might be. They open their mouths and, and it's fun. It's fun for, uh, look, I, I love it because it's fun for me. But, but we've seen them. They've been among the loudest of the politicians and people out there calling for the defunding of the police. Uh, always, throughout all of last year and into this year, even as things got worse and worse, more and more violent, they would defend Antifa. They would defend Black Lives Matter. People that were burning down businesses, killing dozens of individuals, attacking and assaulting police officers, ruining so many people's lives, billions of dollars in insurance claims. And when you need more police, they said, no, it's just, this seems like it's going well. Let's get rid of them. Or let's defund them. Defund them means something different in different places. Sometimes it means, like in Minneapolis, where they're voting, they voted to put it on the, the ballot, and they're voting this fall to get rid of police. And then there's other places where they just want to take the vast majority of their funding, which, by the way, they are already, there's not a police department in the country who's overfunded. They're all under-resourced and understaffed. So they want to take huge chunks of that and put it towards social issues or reparations or whatever the issue du jour is. But we've seen them doing that. And here's Cori Bush, a member of the squad, who's now defending herself, or trying to, after hearing about, and we, we talked about this when it happened, hearing that she spent, just in the last few months alone, $70,000 on her own private security. Lord knows what she spent before and what she will spend moving forward. But again, you've got these people who, we got to defund the police. You, we, we don't, don't worry about security. Security's going to be fine. I, I, need, I need security, though. You don't. I do. This is here, her trying to defend herself. Rule six. The thing, I won't let them get that off. You can't get that off. I'm going to make sure I have security because I know I have had attempts on my life and I have too much work to do. There are too many people that need help right now for me to, to allow that. So if I end up spending 200000 if I spend 10, 10, 10 more dollars on it, you know what? I get to be here to do the work. So suck it up and defunding the police has to happen. We need to defund the police and put that money into social safety nets. Wow. I mean, so articulate, right? Jeez almighty. Shame on the people who elected her. What the hell were you thinking? Wow. And shame on her for thinking that her life matters more than anyone else's. It doesn't. It doesn't. I'm not saying it doesn't matter. I'm saying it doesn't matter more than anyone else's. 
And I promise that you would have less of these threats on your life if you weren't so damn radical in your policies. If you didn't act like people really care what you think, no one does. I mean, no, even Nancy Pelosi and the rest of the Democrats don't really take you guys seriously. They pay attention to you because you have a bunch of followers who are surprisingly dumber than you following you, listening to what you say. I mean, it takes a real special person to be on board. And I've, I've, I've seen them firsthand, man, the, 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 the folks on Twitter who support AOC and Ilan and Rashida Tlaib, Ayanna Presley, Corey. I mean, it, you guys, you guys are beyond help. It's ridiculous. But don't act like an idiot. Don't be so radical. And you'll get less. I'm not saying you won't get any. You'll get less. And by the way, these same types of people who push this, push to defund the police, who, these same types of people who then push for gun control. Well, we don't think Americans should have guns. And I get some people say, we well, just shouldn't have this type of gun. It's a slippery slope. It never stops there. But there's some people who say, you shouldn't have guns at all. But then they have their own. How many politicians have we seen in that camp? They go on a fiery tirade about how we don't need guns. But don't you have one, madam? Well, yes, but I'm different. I'm above you. Again, it's us versus them, guys. Same goes, there's Republicans in that same boat. They think you're more, that they're more important than you. And, and in their mind, they believe it wholeheartedly. They'll say on a stump, look, we're all in this together. We're not. It's, it's just not the case. It's never has been the case, and it's become more and more clear. It's just the last four years, eight years, whatever, whatever you want to call it, certainly the last year and a half, it's just become so blatantly obvious how they see the world. Crazy. All right. Well, speaking of crazy, we've made it through four crazy episodes this week. Appreciate you guys being here for each and every one of them. If you missed them, you can always go back on YouTube, Rumble, DrewBerkwist.com, find them, catch up on them. But since tomorrow's Friday, it means it's booze and banter. My good friend Tom Cunningham, who's a two-time Emmy Award winner, has done every reality TV show that you've ever heard of. Some amazing ones. He's going to stop by. We're going we're gonna to talk about some news stories, and we're going to take questions from you, have some fun, have a drink. Look forward to, to doing that with you tomorrow. Same time, 3 p.m. Eastern live on every platform so be sure to join us bring a friend bring a question bring a drink again it doesn't have to be alcoholic it can be whatever you want but please do come again it'll be 3 p.m eastern tomorrow we hope you have a great rest of the day we'll see you then be safe be smart be free <laughs>